My name's Carolyn Ray. I'm Director of Research at Neuroimaging, which is a 3T MRI research only centre based at Neuroscience Research Australia, which is a medical research institute based in Sydney, Australia. Our main focus is on questions to do with the brain and the central nervous system. Imaging really supports our research because it's crucial for underlying being able to look at the brain. The brain is, is in a box and you can't get hold of it. You can't say to people, can I have a piece of your brain to take home? So you need to be able to take pictures and imaging allows us to do that in a comfortable and non-invasive way for the person who's being imaged. The limitations that we come up against with hardware include things like field of view. We have one um, researcher who is doing a, a study of childhood leg development and they want to image a very large field of view and our system helps with that because of the digital setup so that we can link a number of different coils together um, and improve the field of view that way. But of course our researchers are always wanting more. Well we chose Philips as a research magnet because of the depth of things that you can do with it. On the console you have access to a whole range of variables that you can change and you can change them very easily. And then you have access to control parameters and then behind that you have access to sequence development mode and the, and the keys. And the nice thing about the Philips system is that the uh, keys are actually, there's, a, there's actually a, a, a line into the product. So you're not forever downloading whips from various people. You have these keys and then you know that they're going to proceed to product at some point. And then under all that, you can also do your pulse programming. So the, the depth of the things that you can fiddle with in the system and, and your flexibility and, and the control that you have over it is, is just phenomenal. And, and that's probably the main reason, well, one of the main reasons that we picked it. The other one is, is, is basically the, state, the stability of the gradients, the linearity, the integrity of the gradients in the RF system and the support that we get from the engineering team and our local clinical scientists. Has there been anything that surprised me about the system? It's probably performing better than I thought it would, actually. <laughs> so I had fairly high expectations of it initially. And the images that we get uh, still continue to surprise me about how crisp and clean and fast they are. The first time I saw compressed sense on a Philips system would have been on our new scanner when it was installed. And we looked at, at, at how fast it was accelerating things and got really excited about that. With compressed sense, you need to understand that, that it, it works if you have really good signal to noise to start with. So, you, you know, we, we have really good signal to noise on a lot of our sequences, um, but obviously if you don't have good signal to noise, there, there are other tools in the box as well that you can use, like um, multiband or just even um, normal sense. There's just so much you can do. Well, the first time I saw compressed sense was a bit surprising because the scans with compressed sense on look very similar to the scans without compressed sense on, but you acquired them a lot more quickly. So that's the thing that sort of surprises you, I think. Compressed sense has had a, a big impact on our research because it enables us to speed up acquisitions. And when we're researching on the brain, some of the things that we want to measure, we need to be able to measure very quickly. And with compressed sense, we can do that, whereas previously we weren't able to. Well, I think the images that we're providing are getting national recognition and they're also getting global recognition. We, we tweeted one of them the other day from our Twitter account and we got plenty of likes on it. So I, I think people are really appreciating the quality.